Madonna clearly wanted attention at all times. She had to be noticed, and she made it her business to be noticed all over the world. I don't know that she wanted to be a star as much as she wanted to be a success. Secretly, I'd love to know what it feels like for a girl. I first encountered Madonna at the University of Michigan at a scholarship audition for the American Dance Festival. We had about 80 dancers, and I saw among the 80 this very thin, dark little girl pushing herself around, working very hard, and I thought, that's interesting, let's take her. Toward the end of the course, she said to me, do you think you're gonna need any dancers in New York? I said, Madonna, you've gotta go home to Michigan first, and how are you gonna to get to New York? And how are you gonna live there? She said, don't worry. She was young, and she was determined to do it right and well. November rolled around, and I was teaching a class, and the door opened, and there was Madonna. She had come. One day she came in with a sweater cut from the neck all the way down to below the waist. Cut. And a safety pin about a foot long holding this garment together, but it was dripping off of one shoulder. And I looked at her back and I thought to myself, she's going to do something someday. She came with, I believe, one or two other people from Michigan. They found a closed up synagogue where they were living. And I was worried about her. I got her a job at the Russian tea room in the cloakroom. The arrangement was that they would feed her because I was really worried about how she was going to eat in New York. I had a small group of artists that met in my studio on 29th Street on Thursday evenings. So uh, Madonna came posed for me for a couple of times there, and from that we worked for about a year together. She was a Lower East Side girl, and her look was that. I was inspired by Michelangelo's Sistine Ceiling. I did a whole series of body drawings. From that, I worked on this idea of doing a series of sibyls. Strike the pose. She had this extraordinary way of looking different when she moved, changed the direction of her glance. That led into this more complicated painting. It was a back view of a nude. I wrapped the stuff around her head and it looked like a turban. There was always something very special about her beauty. It's mostly in the eyes, I think. She was very cooperative, but she wouldn't do it for nothing. This was her livelihood. She made a big $10 an hour. Lee Friedlander, who was a very prominent photographer, he would ask me to send him a model every now and then. Madonna was one of the models that I uh, sent to him. He did a whole series of photographs of her. He'd gone to see this film, Desperately Seeking Susan, and he said, is that the same Madonna? And I said, it was. And it was shortly after that that he sold uh, the photographs to Playboy. I think he got a lot of money for that, too. Girls can wear jeans. Cut their hair short. First time I met Madonna was when the Gilroy brothers had come on over and catch a rehearsal. They were called Breakfast Club at this point. Dan and Ed, the Gilroy boys, were on guitar, and uh, Madonna was on drums. She wasn't a great drummer, but neither was Ringo. Angie Schmidt was the one on bass. The Gilroys wanted me to come back on bass instead of Angie. Madonna mostly was drumming for like eight of the 10 songs, and she would come out for her two songs as a front person. Madonna literally wanted to actually reverse the whole thing. Instead of her being 20%, she would do 80 and they would do 20, but it was really their band and they didn't want to go that route. I left the group with Madonna and started a new little group, and we were auditioning drummers, but none of them were working out, so. She contacted Stephen Bray. I guess he responded positively because he came, came to New York. I think the first time I saw Madonna was um, 1977 in Ann Arbor, Michigan. There was a hustle lesson at this discotheque. 
She likes to say that she offered to buy me a drink, but it was the other way around. It was kind of just a social friendship. After she'd moved to New York, I found out that she wasn't studying dance anymore. She was in a band. She came to me one day and she said, you know, that dancing is difficult. I think I'd like to be a rock singer. She said, a friend of mine is writing some songs and we're going to audition them. There's an agent here from Paris. And she left and I thought, sure, okay, fine. And she came back the next day and she said, you know, they took us and I'm going to Paris next week. I never saw her after that. She had been hired to be part of the Patrick Hernandez review. Although, you know, it was an interesting experience. She didn't really like it. I think she got a lot of good clothes out of it. But she basically did what she could to antagonize her keepers and get out of there. Because being in the chorus line wasn't in her game plan.